It is such a beautiful day. It has been breezy out. I'm so thankful for what God is doing, and I'm thankful for how God is moving in the midst of all that is going on. We are blessed. We are such a blessed people. And I'm just so glad in celebrating all that he is doing for us. And I'm just thankful to be here on this Thursday night, this beautiful, beautiful Thursday night. Any time in the house of God is such a beautiful time for me. It's just something about being in his presence, being in his house. I can feel him in this place, and I can feel that he is moving and doing things, not just for me, but doing things for anyone who calls on his name. And so today we want to lift up um, two people in prayer. We want to lift up uh, Nina Scott in prayer. So in, during your prayer time, please make sure uh, to lift her name up. Let's also lift up Ben Lacey as well. Um, and as God is, um, leads you to make sure that um, you're lifting both of those up in your prayer. And anyone else um, that you know is going through something, who has been sick, um, and just needs a healing touch, intercede for them and pray for them. We also want to wish all those who had a birthday this month, there was a lot of them that had it this week. I don't want to miss anybody's name, but you know who you are, and we celebrate you and wish that you, that, that you had such a blessed um, day. And so we're going to continue to celebrate everyone who has a, a birthday, but I know that this week there was a lot that was taking place in September. So happy birthday um, to all of our September birthdays. Um, at this time, if you can, um, I'd like for you to stand. We're going to go into the word of prayer before we go into the word of God. Heavenly Father, we come here today, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your house one more time. Lord, I pray, Father God, that you be in the midst of this service, dear Lord. Lord, I pray that it's not about me, but it's about you, Father God. May the words be your words, dear Lord. May it all be about you, Father God. May your Holy Spirit be in this place, Father God. May lives be changed, dear Lord. I pray, Father God, for you to touch those who are not feeling well. I ask that you touch those who are depressed, dear Lord. I ask you to touch those who need wisdom, dear Lord. I ask those, you to touch those, Father God, who's been in a waiting season, Father God. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to bring forth your word, dear Lord. I ask, Father God, for the spirit, Father God, to continue to work in our lives, Father God, to shape us and mold us, Father God, and to guide us into the place you want us to be. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Um, we have two um, read books that we're going to read from tonight. We're going to start off with Romans 12, and we're going to read Romans 12, 1 through 5. And then our second um, book that we're going to read is Ephesians 2.10. So again, Romans 12, 1 through 5. Romans and Ephesians are both in the, in the New Testament. Um, and so um, this verse right here really blesses me as well as I know that it blesses um, so many other um, people. So again, um, Romans 12, 1 through 5, we'll read that first. And then we will read Ephesians 2.10. And I'm just going to give you a second um, to get to those, um, those verses. Amen. And it's interesting, when I was praying about um, tonight's lesson, um, the Lord had given me a title, and then when I switched over to look for verses to go with it, in my book, it calls, it's called A Living Sacrifice. Um, but my title to you tonight is Your Purpose Driven Life. And I thought that was so fitting and confirmation that the verse goes along with what God has for me to say for you today. So I'm going to go start off with um, Romans 12 again, and it's 12, 1 through 5. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members 
do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we do not all have the same function. Excuse me. So in Christ, we so in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the members. All right, if you can turn just a couple pages to your right to Ephesians. And again, that's Ephesians 2.10. And the word says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works with God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen? Amen. Tonight my lesson is your purpose-driven life. I don't know if you know this, but God created you on purpose for a purpose. He didn't create you to sit still. He didn't create you to look at someone else's purpose. He had a purpose for you, and it was on purpose. You see, before you were even knit or created in your mother's womb, God already had a plan for what he wanted you to do. He already had your calling in front of you. He already had your life mapped out in front of you. He had it all taken care of. And so we need to understand what our purpose and how we can obtain our purpose and follow the plan that God has for us. You see, sometimes we sit back and we look at others and we, we think, wow, I wish I could do that. See, God doesn't call us to wish what other people can do because he already has something greater for you to do. And so we need to understand the, what our purpose is and how we can use it so that we can glorify God. And I found this perfect, perfect definition of what a pur uh, purpose is. It says a purpose is, um, w what it does is it declares why you exist. It captures your heart of why you are on earth and why Jesus died for you. It defines your life, not in terms of what you think, but what God thinks. It anchors your life in character and call of God. It clarifies non-negotiables. And I'm not sure who wrote that, but I just wanted to read that because that in a nutshell tells you what your purpose is. You see, I love the part where it says that it clarifies non-negotiable. You see, our purpose is about us and stop trying to be like someone else. Those are considered non-negotiables. Non-negotiables is dreaming of a purpose, but it's not God's dream, it's your dream. You see, God is going to be able to tell you what your calling is just in how you you spend time and you, you speak with him and um, you're in alignment of what he has. But we need to be careful of the non-negotiables because the non-negotiables is not going to get you to where God is calling you to be. You see, God also does not waste our talents. You see, we don't need to be sitting in the corner, as I said earlier. We need to be using our talents that God has for us. That's the purpose. And so if when we're sitting there to me and we're not doing what God calls us to do, we're wasting our talents. We are, we are typically saying, God, you may have got it, given this to me, but you weren't good enough to give me what I got. I'm asking for more. So we need to be careful that we are not wasting our talents. And see, our living a purpose-driven life is not something that you do just on Sunday or just on Wednesday or just on Thursday. It is every day, every second of the day, every hour of the day. We were created to breathe the life of God daily. And so we need to make sure that we follow what he has. As we are talking about, and we have been a little bit about seasons, you will see that your purpose is still the same purpose. It's just di used differently in seasons. And so we need to make sure that whatever season we're in, we're sharpening our skills so that we can do what call God has called us to do. And so I have a couple of points that I want to go with, over with you tonight. And um, these points, I believe, have helped me to understand what God has called me to do. And I pray that it does the same for you. Um, and, of course, it's going to be backed up by the word of God because I believe our purpose is to back everything up by the word of God. You see, the word of God brings confirmation of what you're supposed to do. And so we need to make sure anything that we're doing aligns with the word of God. 
And so the first scripture that we read was from Romans 1, and it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. That is your true and proper worship. In order to get to our true and proper worship, we need to spring clean our spirit daily. And when I say spring bring, clean your spirit daily, that means you need to get all that junk that is in you, you need to get rid of it so that you can hear the word of God. You see, there's so many times that we have distractions as soon as our eyes open up. But our purpose is as soon as our eyes open up is to thank God for opening up our eyes. And when we do the spring cleaning, it's a deep cleaning. You know, there's a difference between just a dust here, a dust there, a mop here, a mop there. Spring cleaning is getting on your hands and knees, getting in the corners, getting into areas that no one can see. You see, when we spring clean our spirit, we need to get into the areas that no one can see except for the Lord. And in those areas, you say, Lord, what is in me that I know that is not keeping me from doing what you have called me to do? You see, I was thinking about that recently. I was telling my husband we have a couple of heavy items in our house. And I said, dear, I need to spring clean, but you need to move the heavy items. Let me tell you, you need to ask God to move those heavy items that are in your life that are keeping you from being clean. There's some things that we cannot keep up with. There's some things that we cannot bear, but he can bear it for us. And it is no shame in asking the Lord to move in certain areas in our lives. And so we need to make sure we're getting behind all of the different areas. We need to make sure that we are on our hands and we are on our knees and we are cleansing our spirit. You see, prayer helps us cleanse our spirit as well. When you commune with God, there's things that he has for you that you just don't don't know about until you take that time with him there's nothing like the Lord planning your day you you have to release your day to the Lord that's part of your spring cleaning is releasing your the things to the Lord you see um, we have to get rid of certain things in our lives but he will tell you if you ask the Lord and say Lord what in my life do I need to remove so that I can serve you correctly he will tell you and so we need to make sure we're in commune with him proper worship is a part of uh, cleaning our spirit do you know when you are worshiping with your heart not with your mind when you're worshiping with your heart, it's an act of surrender. You're saying, here I am, Lord, use me. Because he wants to use you for his glory. But in order for him to use you, you need to make sure your arms are open wide and you have to surrender. You see, surrendering is trusting fully. And we need to trust fully in the Lord. And we also need to make sure that we are staying focused and not being distracted. You see, the enemy doesn't want us to spring clean our spirit. You know what the enemy does? He, he sends distractions. He sends things like social media. He sends things like phone calls. He sends things like negative news. He sends different things to keep you from cleaning your spirit. But you know what? You need to block out the enemy and focus on God. You need to make sure that you are having time with him and allowing this time to be um, important. Protect your time with the Lord. Protect your time with the Lord. I don't know how important um, I can say that over and over again, but it is so important to protect your time with the Lord. Invite the Lord in during those times and saying, Lord, my mind gets distracted at times, but I need you to help me to stay focused on what you are calling me to do for today. Because we don't want the enemy to win over what God has called us for the, for the day. You see, God wants to bless us daily, but we need to make sure that we're cleaning our spirits. We also need to make sure that we are 
live in our lives as God has said. So as I'm saying, spring cleaning your life, make sure you stop saying that you are saved and lived like you are saved. You see, when you spring clean your life, you need to, you see that your actions are going one way, but your words are going to a whole different way. We need to be in alignment with our action and our words. We need to make sure that how we act outside the house is the same way we act inside the house. We need to make sure that we act the same way outside a church, the same way inside a church. You see, spring cleaning will check you. I'm telling you, God will check you. The Holy Spirit will check you. If you allow it and you know that you are not doing what you're going supposed to be doing, you will be checked. And so we need to make sure that we are aligning ourselves, we are spring cleaning our spirit, that we are prostrate in front of the Lord, and that we are surrendering him and that we are worshiping him and that we are giving all that we have but first get rid of the junk get rid of all that junk that's in you and make sure that your mouth shows what your heart says part of spring cleaning is making sure your heart is clean you see if you are sitting up there saying negative words that means your heart is negative if you are gossiping that means you have a gossiping spirit if you are lying that means you have a lying spirit we need to make sure we are lining up our mouth with our hearts because that's what god looks at he doesn't he may hear the words but he see the hearts he see the things that we don't talk about and so we need to make sure that we are spring cleaning our lives our, my next point comes from romans 2 where it says do not conform to the pattern of the this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what god's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, we have heard this verse, and this verse um, is very important. And so my point, too, is change your mindset from worldly vision to God's vision. You see, our purpose is not about how I can be the richest person on earth. Our purpose is not about um, having the biggest house. Our purpose is not about having the best car. All of that is worldly vision, and that's not what God is calling us to do. You see, God is calling us to look upon him to see what he has. Did you notice that if you look at the um, celebrities and they have everything that you think that they can imagine, but they're so unhappy? How many of them are constantly getting married over and over again? How many of them are buying three, four houses and still not happy? See, they don't understand what their purpose is. All they know is they see what the world wants. They don't even have their right name. How many stars have we heard don't even go by what their birth name is? You see, we need to go by what God has called us, which is a child of God. And when we recognize we are a child of God, that's when we have godly vision and not worldly vision. And so I'm here to tell you to make sure that you are guarding your thinking. Replace worldly desires with spiritual desires. And remember that our purpose is not into a spirit, material things, it's into spiritual things. You see, there's two um, verses I want to read to you from that, and I love this. This is one of my um, favorite verses. It's Mark 8:36. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul. See, if you have a worldly purpose, that means you are losing your soul to God. But if you have a godly purpose, you're doing what God has called you to do. And so we need to make sure we're not living for the world. We're living for God. So stop people pleasing. Stop trying to perpetrate and act like you are someone you're not because you're losing who you are. You forget who you are. And so if you don't recognize you how do you think God's gonna recognize you you see because he created you to be a certain way and to do do certain things but if you're not following him then that you're not doing what he called to do and so my other scripture for this one is first Peter 1 13 it says therefore preparing your mind for action and being so reminded set your hopefully on the grace that we will be brought to you in the revelation of Jesus Christ. You see, when you set your mind on God, it is an action. 
It is not something that you sit there. It's something that you have to do. It comes with maturity, right? As when you're a babe in a Christ or when you are actually, if I go back, if you remember if you have children or when you were a child, you had to be trained. You had to be trained your thoughts of how to think. And so as you are training your mind, you need to remind yourself that's not of God. This is of God. This is how I need to do. This is how I need to think. This is how I need to act. Sometimes God is telling us to stop talking when situations are taking place. That's an action. That's training your mind to, to do um, what God has called you to do. And so we need to make sure that we are changing our vision and changing our mind. Shift our focus. Make sure our focus is what God's purpose is for us. You see, our life must be in sync with what God's purpose is for us. If your life is in chaos, and you, then you need to do a spirit check because your life is in chaos because you have not sat still to see what God has called you to do. Make sure that you are checking yourself. You're responding correctly. This is, again, when you're training your mind of what's going on. But if you're one of the ones where um, they say is the drama queen or is the drama king, you know, who gets all upset on, over everything that takes place, you need to check yourself. Because when you have chaos, you create chaos around you. And when you create chaos around you, you're not able to have the Holy Spirit surround you because you're so focused on all the negative things that are going around. So we need to make sure that we are careful in creating the right atmosphere for our mind and our thoughts that we keep our eyes on God. And see, when we do that, we are able to bear fruit. And I'm saying good fruit, not fruit that spoils, good fruit, fruit that produces other fruit. Because when our mind shifts in the mindset of God, then those around us will shift too. Nobody wants to be around negative Nancy. Everybody wants to be around someone positive, someone encouraging, someone to help you to go, grow and, and um, to do what God has called you to do and to help you to um, remain in what God has for you. And so we need to make sure that we are um, focused on what the Lord has for us, surrounding us with the right people, bearing good fruit, and staying connected to the vine. You see, um, we don't need to um, have, uh, we have a um, garden in our house, and when our, uh, when our um, fruit gets really um, bad, it drops on itself because it's so heavy. No, we want to bear the type of fruit that surrounds other people that wants to be around us. We want to stay connected to the vine. And when I say connected to the vine, I mean connected to God. Because when you are connected to God, you are able to grow healthy fully into your um, potential and do the call that he has for you to do. And we need to make sure that we are not lukewarm Christians. You see, lukewarm Christians, have that mindset of I want to be in my comfort zone. God didn't call us to be in our comfort zone. I don't know about you, but I think pretty much a couple times a week, he shakes me up and pulls me out. But you know what? When you, I'm pulled out of my comfort zone, I'm able to grow and see what God has. It also allows me to see what God can do in my life instead of what I can do in my life. And so we need to get out of that mindset that every day is going to be the same same day, we're going to do the same thing, and we have the same skill that we're going to do over and over again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. No, allow God to shake you up. And when he shakes you up, watch how things move. Watch how mountains move. Watch how your life change. Watch how you are able to see your purpose and understand what God has called you to do. And when he also takes you out of your comfort zone, it allows you to be on fire on fire for him because you're so excited. Have you ever saw when a child learned to ride a bike and they were uncomfortable at first because of the training wheels and then they took the training wheels off of the bike and they can do it and how excited and on fire they were? That's what you have to have. You have to have that mindset like a child of being so excited of what my father did for me that I can't wait to see what I can do next. It gives you the boldness and the confidence to step up and to do what God God has called you to do. And so I'm saying again, it is so important, so important to make sure that you have a godly vision and not a worldly vision. 
My third point comes from Romans 3. And it says, for the grace, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed you to each of you. So my point three um, that I have for you is to stay humble. You see, when we are not humble and we are praising ourselves, we don't give room for God to, pray, to praise him. And so we need to make sure that we are not complimenting ourselves when it's, the compliment should really come from God. You see, God calls us to stay humble. First Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that the proper time he may exalt you. Hum humility equals promotion. And so we need to remain humble at all times. And it's okay when people say, you know, you've done a good job and you say thank you. It's okay to say that. I'm not saying it's so, you know, it's not good to say, um, you know, what's going on, you know, what you do good or, um, or, um, or how God has blessed you. I'm not saying that at all. The issue comes when you walk around and say, you know, I'm the best teacher there's ever been that walked on the face of this earth. Well, you know what? God is the one who gave you the lesson to teach in the first place. And so we need to make sure that we are always giving the proper credit to him. And that's what humbling is. Humbling is making sure that we know that we serve a greater God who gave us our gifts. And I know that sometimes it's hard uh, because, you know, you get excited. You get in the moment. You know, there's a whole bunch of people cheering you on, and you're like, yes, yes, yes. But how many athletes do we see that are so good but are so mean? If you meet them in person, they are not humble at all. We don't want to be like that. We don't want to be like that at all because we cannot minister to people about Jesus Christ if we're so busy about ourselves. We're puffing ourselves up. You know, and I, and I love sports just like everyone else, but oftentimes when I see them, I'm wondering, how are you in person? And I've been blessed to meet, not athletes, but um, I've met, been blessed to meet some people in person, and I thought, oh, whoa. No, <laughs> you know, I'm going to pray for you. And so we want to make sure that we have, we make sure that we stay humble, that we don't think we're more important than others, and that we remember that the gifts that God has for us is, um, is a blessing for us. And so we need to make sure that we guard our mind, guard our heart, guard our actions, and make sure that we're not glorifying ourselves, that we are glorifying God. Remain humble at all times. And remember, it's okay to be talented, but you give him the praise for giving you the talent. Amen? Amen. So then the next um, point comes from Romans 4 and 5, and it says, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. In other words, what this verse is saying is we are a team in the kingdom of God. There is no I. There is an us in this team. You see, the Lord gave each and every one of us a gift. And, and our gifts are used for his glory. There may be something that... Um, Stacy could do that I can't do. Stacy can um, bake cupcakes. I'm not good at cupcakes. But you know what? She's doing it for the glory of God. We need to cheer each other up when, even though we don't have the same talents that they have. And I was thinking about this um, as I was thinking about a team, and um, I thought about how you have a jigsaw puzzle, right? The jigsaw puzzle has different pieces, and they're all messed up in the box. But when the jigsaw puzzle is put together, it becomes one unit. You see, we are one unit serving God with many different talents. And so we need to make sure that we are complimenting each other and that we are recognizing each other and that we are make, doing our part for the kingdom. You know, I love that we say that he, this here, stay in your lane. We need to stay in our lane because when you're not doing what God has called you to do, then you're not doing it right. 
You see, I've seen um, people try to give themselves self-talents and not God talent, and it becomes to be all messy. We don't want that puzzle that we just put together all messy, especially if it's a thousand-piece puzzle, because it takes a thousand of us to do this, this task that God has called us. And see, your purpose will be revealed sometimes through other people. You see, that's why it's so important to be in church, and that's so important to have prayer because you are surrounded by Christian um, brothers and sisters that may see something in you that God hasn't revealed yet, but he's using that person to tell you. And so we need to make sure that we are in connection, that we are fellowshipping with one another because that helps us grow. That helps us to um, understand the calling of our lives. And, you know, um, it's so important that we make sure that um, we are not only being spoken into, but that we also speak into others. You see, this is not a one side type of thing. Church is a two times type of thing. Actually, let me just be real to you. It's a three time, three type type of thing. Because see, the Holy Spirit leads all of that. And so we can't leave him out of what he's doing. And then another thing I thought about, another example is um, of us working together as a team is there's five food groups, right? on one plate. Each food group has a purpose. Each food group has a purpose. And when it comes together, it nourishes our body. You see, in the church, we all have different gifts. Each gift has a purpose, and it's to nourish and to grow um, in, our, in what God has called us to do. And I know that there's a different plate for dessert, you know, and sometimes there's a different appetizer. And that's fine that sometimes people have their little silos, but silos don't last. You see, silos are not connected. So we all need to be connected all together in one. So it's okay to put your dessert on the plate because the dessert will nourish you in the same way. It's okay to have that appetizer put on your plate because it will put you in the same way. And what I'm trying to say is we need to make sure that those who seem like they are different to bring them in. We hold each other accountable. Let's make sure that we're doing this for the body of Christ. Amen. There's um, a great verse that also um, supports this. It's um, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. It says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. Let me stop right there. My gift came from God, your gift came from God, your gift came from God, your gift came from God. It didn't come from ourselves. The same spirit is what gave us our gifts. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord, there are different kinds of working. But in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. You see, we have one God who is at work with us, one God. And so our purpose in life is to serve that one God with the gift that he has us and to, to do it in the best ability that we can do. We also want to make sure um, that we are not around people who only come around that need you, but come around, I mean, the people who come around who will feed you. you. We need to feed each other. You see, that's what a body does, is it feeds each other. There's functions in each part of our bodies, and so we need to make sure that we are constantly surrounding ourselves. Stop starving your gift. Mm, I forgot to tell you this. Stop starving your gift. Stop starving your gift. Mm, stop starving your gift. I keep saying this again because over and again, stop starving your gift. Because see, when you're starving your gift, you're starving God. And what I mean by that is God has put in everything for you to do. If you're sitting up there so busy trying to do everybody else's gift, you're not doing what God called you to do. Have you ever seen someone who's been malnutrition and unhealthy? When you're starving your purpose and you're starving what God has called you to do, you become mal mal malnourished and unhealthy. And what I say about that, those are the people who draw away from the church. Those are the people who start schisms. Those are the people who um, think that they can run the whole show. 
and they're not there to run the whole show. And so we need to make sure that we are not starving what God has called us to do. We need to focus on what God has called us to do and not focus on what everybody else has called us to do. And so if you notice that you have become one of those people, you know, I, we all have a GPS and your GPS tells you as big as day when you're not going in the right direction you're supposed to go and to recalculate. You need to recalculate what you're supposed to be doing. And then, you know, there's times when you're not sure how that can happen. Why don't you just go ahead and take that U-turn? You see, when you take that U-turn, you start, you start from the world, but you turn right back into God. And so we need to make sure that we are recalculating and that we are turning into what God has for us. Because each of us have our own assignment, and our assignment will be unified God. And so, um, you know, as we're talking about the different ways and the different functions of your purpose, this right here, the book, the Bible, it provides you with so many scriptures about what your purpose will be. You see, you can sit there and you can, you can take time as you were doing praying, as we were talking about earlier, and um, you could be reading the word. But sometimes God will just open up a page and he'll say, this, this is what I have for you. This is what I call you to do, to do today. And there's nothing like confirmation from God. So we need to make sure that we are doing that. And another way for us to do that is when we are in service and, and God and pastor is speaking and he's preaching and he's hitting us. And there is something that he just said that just changed you a little bit, that made you jump a little bit. Remember that because when you leave from here, that's what God wants you to work on. You see, pastor doesn't come up here to preach just to, you know, just to preach, just to talk to empty ears. He's here to minister to our hearts, to say what God has for us. So God uses him for his purpose to show us what our purpose is. Amen. He's so good. I'm so thankful for all that God does. He has created each and every one of us. And I'm excited because we would be boring if we all had the same skills. We would not be able to get what God has called us to do if we all did the same skills. We need to, we need to be excited of what God used you. If God calls you to be um, cleaning the church, you be the best cleaner that God has called you to be. If God has called you to teach, you be the best best teacher that God has called you to be. And some of our gifts are not up front, and that's okay. God didn't call everyone to preach. If he called everyone to preach, Sundays would be very long, right? And not everybody is called to preach because not God, that's not what the gift that God has called us. And so if God has called you to preach, be the best preacher that God has called you to be. If God has called you to be an encourager, be the best encourager you can be. If you are just a person who's just supposed to shake hands, shake hands with a smile each and every time. You see, you may think that what you're doing is minimum, but in somebody's day, that meant would have been maximum in, in what they need. And so we need to make sure each and every gift that we have, that we do it to the best of our ability. God doesn't do small things. He does big things. It may seem small to you, but it's not. And so we need to not compare and compete with each and every one of us and say, you know, but she, Lord, I don't understand, but, you know, she has this talent, and you just have me over here doing bookkeeping. Be the best bookkeeper you can be because some people can't do math, and so that's why God has put it in you to do it there. Some people can't work with children, but that's why God has put you there to work with children. Some people can't stand in front of people, but that's why God calls you to stand in front of people. All of us have a piece in the kingdom, and you see what it looks like here is what it's going to look like up there. We're all going to be together as one serving him, and so we need to make sure that we're doing it down here. My last point comes from Ephesians um, 2.10 where it says, for we are God's handiwork creating in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I love that verse. I just, I love that verse because it's saying that, as I said at the beginning, that God had created us in advance of how um, he wanted us to do and how he wanted us to live. You see, we are created by God to do the will of God. And, you know, Psalms 139, um, it talks about how God created us and he knit us together and 
um, and, you know, for a purpose. Just remember you were knitted by God. He, as he was knitting you, was putting in the plans of what he was calling for you to do. And um, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You see, we don't need to worry about the plans because God has already created plans for us. That's peace right there, leaving it at the feet of Jesus because we know that he has it for us. And I know that some days seem a little dark and some days you struggle because you're not sure what your plan is. But you know, God doesn't reveal the whole plan at one time. Make sure that you know that the, there's a piece of it and it's going to be going on continuously all your life. Um, if he revealed all the plans for us at one time, we're not ready for it because there's some things that are so big for that we can't imagine that we can do that during that waiting time, during that quiet time he's working with us you know in our storms God is working with us he's helping us to grow he's helping us to understand how to handle situations also in our waiting times that's when we grow in prayer that's when we rely on the word of God that's when we understand uh, the calling that he has for us because we're having that relationship with him and so we need to make sure that we are staying the course that we do not give up and that we remember that our purpose that God has for us, um, that he will help us to fulfill it. And even when we um, give up on the plan, remember this, God never gives up on the plan. Aren't you glad that we, um, so we serve a God that does not give up on you? Well, I can give up on myself over and over again, but God said, my child, my child, I have you. He has each and every one of us. When we feel like life is getting difficult or life is hard, remember, don't give up. If we see people around us being promoted and we're not promoted, don't give up. God is working for you. If you see times where people are being elevated and you're not being elevated, don't give up. God is working in the midst of the process. We need to make sure that we understand that everybody's timing is on a different clock. We're not all on the same clock. When we're ready is when he'll move us to the next level. But until then, let's celebrate him in the level that we are in now. Let's praise him in the level that we are in now. Let's get ready for the next step that he has for him now. And let's thank him continually. Praise him. Thank you. Lord, though I know the promotion's coming. It hasn't came yet. I've been waiting three years. But when it comes, it'll be glorious. And I'm thanking you and praising you for where you have me now. See, sometimes we have to be content of where we are now before God lifts us up to the next place. You see, because then God knows that we are ready. And then back to the humble, we'll be humbled when it's time to move over. And so I want to make sure that each and every one... Um, who hears my voice knows that we are we just need to trust God we need to know that he will complete everything even when we don't think it's completed we need to um, understand that every single day we have a purpose every single day we have a calling you mean something to the Lord because if you didn't mean something to the Lord, he wouldn't have created you. And so we need to make sure when we wake up, our purpose is to serve him. And so my challenge to each and every one is um, when they wake up tomorrow and every morning from them, say, Lord, thank you. Here I am. Use me. Amen. Amen. That's all that I have for you this evening. We're going to go into prayer. Um, again, if we could make sure that we keep um, Nina Scott in prayer and um, Ben Lacey in prayer as well. Um, and if those who can stand, if I ask that you can please stand and we will um, close in prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we come here today and we thank you, dear Lord, again for this message, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for showing us that you have a purpose in each and every one of us, dear Lord. We thank you that you have a calling on our lives, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you see the bigger picture, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for taking each and every one of us out of our comfort zone, dear Lord. Lord, we're ready. We're ready to do what you have called us to do, dear Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us breath, dear Lord. Breath, Father God, to do the things that you have called us 
to do, dear Lord. Thank you for surrounding us, Father God, surrounding us with um, your love, Father God, Thank, surrounding us with your comfort, dear Lord, surrounding us with your peace, Father God. Lord, thank you for the skills that you have placed upon our lives, Father God. I ask, dear Lord, um, that you take this time, dear Lord, to work in us, Father God, so that we may grow, dear Lord, grow into what you have called us to do, Father God. Sharpen our minds, dear Lord. Sharpen our hearts, Father God. Sharpen our tongues, Father God, dear Lord. May we understand, dear Lord, that our purpose, Father God, is to glorify you, Father God, to do the things that you have called us to do, dear Lord. It's not about us, Father God. It's about you, dear Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you have mapped out our lives, Father God. We didn't have to do that process, dear Lord, but you have done that process for us. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving us each step, dear Lord, each step that we need to take, dear Lord. And thank you, Father God, for the times that we are waiting. Thank you for the times that are quiet, dear Lord, because you're working in the midst of us then, dear Lord. Father God, we honor you. We thank you, dear Lord. We praise you, Father God. We ask, dear Lord, that you continue to bless this place. Bless Eden Ministries, Father God. Bless our pastor and our first lady, Father God. Continue to give them the vision that you have for them for this church, dear Lord. We ask, Father God, for a move, a move of God to be done, dear Lord, in this place, dear Lord. Use us, dear Lord, Father God, to help, dear Lord, to win souls to you, Father God. Give us the, the boldness to stand strong in you, dear Lord. Let us not neglect, dear Lord, neglect who we are in you, Father God. Let us not starve our spirits, dear Lord, Father God, but feed our spirits, dear Lord. Feed our spirits with the word. Feed our spirits, Father God, with prayer. Feed our spirits with fellowship, dear Lord. Help us to encourage each other's gifts, Father God. Dear Lord, we ask, Father God, to keep us to be humbled at all times, Father God. May you always get the praise, dear Lord. Lord, that we thank you, Father God, each and every time that you bless our lives, Father God. Let you not be an afterthought in our life, Father God, but that you be in every thought of our lives, dear Lord. Father God, I ask that you continue to bless us, Father God. I pray for those who are sick, dear Lord, and ask for a healing touch on their bodies. I pray for those who are depressed, dear Lord. Let them know, Father God, they are not alone, that you are with them. I pray for those who are going through financial issues, dear Lord, and ask that you bless their finances. Father God, I pray for those, dear Lord, who are struggling with some things, dear Lord, that they don't even mention, Father God, but you hear their heart, Father God. May it be a heartbeat prayer for them, dear Lord. I ask, Father God, that you continue, dear Lord, to shape, mold us, dear Lord, so that we can walk, Father God, in what you have for us each day. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.